Hello and welcome to another episode of Sitting in the Drive hoping something gets fixed today. And today it might because I have now got what I'm hoping is about to become my new absolute favourite toy in the world. Except it doesn't actually belong to me, I've only borrowed it for this one video. But it's about to become my favourite tool in the world. This is an induction heating tool and the idea is instead of having an oxy torch which will potentially catch the car on fire and be quite a pain to use, I can use a focused intense amount of heat to break off these bolts on the car and get those shock absorbers off. I've been reading the instruction book and it's incredibly simple to use. You plug it in, turn it on, well before you do that actually you choose your appropriate one of these little heat ones. So we've got two different sizes for going over the ends of bolts so I think I'll probably use this one because this is used two or three millimeters around it to avoid actual physical contact. You've got this one for taking, well for larger panels but I might I'm not sure which one to use, I'm going to have a good look at it because the bolt is quite long, it's quite deep into the car so just heating the end might not be enough. This one you can actually wrap around a difficult suspension component so this might be the one to go for or possibly this one where I can hold it against the back of the, um, the shock tower. So I'm going to take the wheel off, have a look and then hopefully in just a few minutes I'm going to have these shock absorbers free and I can get the suspension sorted and get the car MOT'd and drive it again. Ah, but first of all we're going to move it onto the blocks of wood because I'd forgotten how low the suspension is since two weeks ago. If you've not come across an induction heating tool before, basically it's the modern equivalent of an oxyacetylene torch in a small, neat, safe package. On the plus sides, it's tiny and it's safe. On the downside, it's quite an expensive bit of kit. All I can say is it's my new favourite tool and I want one. One brilliant thing about this car which I absolutely love is that no matter how long it's been sat for, how bad the weather is around it, how badly it's been neglected, turn the key, it always goes, every time. Love this old thing. So this is the bolt I'm trying to get undone, seized on both sides. If I pull out slightly, you can see it's on the back of the wheel hub carrier and it pinches tight on the bottom of the shock absorber and the thread comes out if you can see this tool behind this brake cable behind here, it's probably a bit too dark to see this but uh, yeah, that's the thing I'm trying to get undone so now I'm going to try and work out how on earth to get heat into that particular position let's invest in my gate well the first and most obvious way of doing this is to use the smaller of the two over the top of the bolt head type things um, which will then go across like that give it some heat and that should do the trick looking at this some more I think I'm going to go with the flexible one I'm sorry I got it dirty sorry Draper I've got your thing dirty I didn't mean to um, this one wraps around the entire length of this protruding outpost so I can coil it around heat the entire bolt at one time. I think that might be the way to do it. And this is pretty easy to use, it's got nice little thumb wheels on there. So I'll pop that in there and that in there. So I've now made a nice heat coil which will fit around that component. In fact I might do it one less loop because that seems to be a bit tight. And this is one time I can't use a cable tie to keep us all in the right shape and that would be a bit messy. Right so that is now ready to go. Now, I honestly don't know what to expect at this point because I've never used this thing before. I don't know whether the thing's going to glow red, it does say just give it two seconds of heat and then have a go. So here we go, one two. I can smell the heat but I can't really feel it. Let's try a different thing on it. Right, I'm going to try the paddle shaped one because I think if I try and put some heat onto the thread end it might be a bit easier. But I'm going to move this brake cable out of the way first. Again I can smell the heat but I can't really feel the radiant heat. Ooh, there's a bit of smoke coming off the uh, bottom of the shock tower. Let's give this a whirl. So 
giving it a couple of seconds on and a couple of seconds off. Actually, the smoke is coming from the um, the wand itself. It's brand new. I think it's like smoking off a coating of some kind. Two seconds on. Two seconds off. Two seconds on. It's getting really good and warm. The book says don't get it red hot. That's not necessary. We want to get it properly warm because this has given such a fight so far. I'm guessing even with me not having the button pushed to turn it on, there's still going to be a lot of heat coming off that wand. Right, let's give it a whirl. Turning. I'm shredding it some more, I'm not sure which. Oh, I'm just shredding it some more. Damn it. slow, gentle leverage and extreme heat. This is everything every comment has said so far, which I knew anyway. But it still uh, doesn't want to do it. Mm. There must be a lot of heat in it because even the socket feels hot now. Come on. Finally, it is free. Oh, thank goodness for that. I can't believe how tight this thing is on here. This is just ridiculous. Oh my god, that is seized good and proper. Oh, yeah, now it's coming free at last. It's actually moving, and the hub carrier is loose on the bottom of the shock as well, which means ah, I can get that out in later on as well. I shall now use a suitable drift or a screwdriver and a hammer and shall whack that out. It doesn't matter that I'm going to leave this not actually connected because... Oh, sorry, the bolt's not in the thing because I'm only going to roll it back a metre or so into the parking bay until I can get another appointment to get these shocks rebuilt at Gaz. There we go. This is a so-and-so that was causing all that grief. Of course, I can't get the damn thing out now. And hit it in the vice, I think. Ow, wow, ow, that's astonishingly warm. As an aside, this is a Bosch 18 volt cordless battery doodah, cordless drill battery, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. To replace this is more than the drill costs new, and this lasts 30 seconds. This cost under a tenner from eBay, and it's God knows what Chinese brand, Flurion, and it's brilliant, and it works on the original Bosch charger as well. Not that I'm advertising or related or in any way linked to Flurion, but uh, yeah. That's quite handy, that. Now, this is actually extremely hot to touch. So, ow. Let's see if I can somehow release this from... I must move this alpha sign 
because I don't want to be hit with a hammer ever. Oh, shit. Okay. I should probably also move the camera from somewhere that's vibrating and vulnerable when I'm hitting things with a hammer. I must put a camera mount up on the wall. That'd be more sensible, wouldn't it? This no longer wishes to part company. I'm not worried about smashing the thread because this bolt is going in the bin. Whoa, or under the car. Either way, it's not going back on the motor. Right, success for side one. So I can gather my bits and bobs, take them around the other side of the car, put this wheel back on so I can lower it down. wheel back on so I can load the car back down. I'll move that as well. Oh that is such a relief having that done. Well, at least on one side. That was the worst of the two sides because I, I mangled the bolt pretty badly trying to get it off. <laughs> that wheel feels extremely jiggly now. That's not connected to anything. Right, let's hope this side is as easy as the first side. Um, or perhaps even it's, oh damn, no I can't. Do you know a really good way of making a job take too long, or longer than it should do? Spend a couple minutes looking for the right spanner for a bolt, and then realize that when you get back to the car, you're looking at the wrong bolt. Why is this turning? It's really finger tight. It was finger tight when I left it. There we go. I don't like working this side of the car so much when it's just here because this gravelly bit, some of the local cats seem to think it's okay to use as a toilet, which I'm less keen on. I do not think it is okay. This thing now can do its business, unlike the cats, which I don't want to do their business. Total two second bursts. Two second bursts, like in the instruction book. Focused heat. Let's get this thing good and hot again, and hopefully, it'll come straight off like the other one. I will have to order up some new ones of these bolts before I put the car back together again, obviously, because these are not going to be used ever again. I think Rimmer Brothers carry them. I hope Rimmer Brothers carry them, otherwise I'm stuck. Let's try and get both ends of the bolt. It's quite a long thing, so like, like that kind of length, through thick, thick metal. Let's try and get the whole lot fairly warm. And by the time the other one freed off, the actual shock absorber was warm to the touch, so. And a lot of heat had gone into it by then. I should probably look at doing the ball joint as well while I'm here, the track rod end that needs changing. Seems I've got this beautiful, fantastic tool. It's interesting using it. There's a bit of breeze from the fan inside, you can hear that going. But when you actually hit the button, you can feel a little kind of vibration through your hand. It's starting to get a good bit of heat through this whole block of metal now. The incredible thing is, there's really not that much radiant heat coming off it. So it's focusing the heat really precisely I can put my hand really close to it and the brake lines which are fairly nearby don't really feel warm at all but there's huge heat going into the metal because you can feel other parts of the component that are getting warm. Two seconds on, two seconds off, well, give or take. There's a bit of smoke from the oil burning out from the... I guess it's all the WD-40 I've put on there starting to smoke off at last. Right. Where's the socket? That's nice and hot and I've lost the thing. Lefty loosey tighty righty.
Okay. Oh, it's moving. Yes. Oh, it's starting to loosen up at last. Yes. Ow. It's a lot of leverage when you crush your hand with a breaker bar. You've got enough to get me 99 as well. Yay, 99s. I can't believe how stiff this blooming bolt is. It's halfway out, but it's still barely wanting to turn. Maybe. It's loose now, that's no, not loose. Crying out loud. Oh, they're still barely wanting to turn. Yeah, ice cream. <clears throat> that's the end of the thread there. I need my suitable drift, which needs two hands. This can only end badly. Yeah, that needs two hands. Oh no, oh, there we go. Free, you, you and your little buddy caused me so much trouble. Now the other thing the car failed on was this track rod end, which does actually look a bit perished now I come to look at it. I figured since I've got this thing here, I might as well make the most of it and get in there with the, um, more hot stuff. It's quite fun really. Um, however, this split pin looks like it's seen far better days. I don't think that's going to come out at all. Ah, okay. Those ends aren't. Ooh, oh well. Let's get it good and hot and see if I can take it apart. Oh, actually no. Seems to actually be working. Intense heat rules. What do you know? Job done. Hot. Sorry, you just missed the exciting bit where I used this bit and a hammer and it came out quite happily. Sorry about that. Ow, it's still boiling hot to touch. The 14 millimeter socket keeps slipping on here, so I've reduced to embarrassment of this as well to rest these against. So that is now excessively hot and like dangerous to touch hot. And it's got a spanner and more grits on there. And it still will not damn well turn. Trevor, you just inherited a job. I'm not quite sure I'm going to get the car to you now because this isn't connected anymore and doesn't want to do up. But I'll figure something out. Bother. Oh, that was too good to be true, really. Two things going properly and as expected in one go. That was never going to happen, really, was it? Well, at least I've got these things free now. So as soon as I've got a date to get these um, rebuilt by Gaz, I can roll us up the drive, take all four shocks off in the morning, get them rebuilt in the day put them back on in the afternoon. Job done. This thing is going to be an issue because I can't now drive the car until I can get this off because I can't actually tighten this back up again because the threads are knackered on it. Um, I don't know. I'll douse it in WD. I might consider grinding it off. Don't know. Come to that. We'll jump off that later. So there we go. My new absolute favourite tool in the world. Draper, thank you so much for the loan of this tool. It's made it means that I can actually get these shock absorbers off the car and get the car rolling again. Bad news, you're not having it back. I'm moving house and changing my name because this is too good to return. Sorry guys. Um, but before I say thanks for watching and hit like and subscribe and all that malarkey, one final thing on the Mercedes.
The other day when I changed these rather nice wheels on the Mercedes, a few sharp ride people did comment, why on earth didn't I change the centre hubs? Or the little cup cap thingies for the centre. Because these ones are disgusting. These are about six months old and off Amazon and they cost about tenner and frankly, you get what you pay for because they are just trash. The reason I didn't change them on the day was because when I was at Mercedes, um, they wanted about 75 pounds for a set of four. So when I got home, I sent, went onto eBay, started hunting around and found a junkyard set of very nice ones from a W204 or similar. And these were 30 pounds for a set of four. And they are now gonna make my car look far smarter indeed. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this particular episode of my new favorite tool in the world, because I need that thing. It's small, it's light, it's not dangerous. It's, oh, it's the future. Everyone needs one. I need to go and rob somewhere now. Hit my Patreon, please. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please hit like, and please hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you didn't, well, I'm amazed you made it this long to hit dislike. The next time you see the Rover, you're going to see the springs in pieces when we're at Gaz doing exciting rebuilding suspension stuff, which I'm very excited about, and hopefully it'll make great entertainment for you guys too. Um, see you next time. Mm-hmm.